Hi everyone. Today we're going to start part one of a two-part series detailing how to remote access, remote control, remote manage a remote mining rig or farm, just like I have right here. Let me shut everything off in here so I don't have to speak so loud and we'll get going. So in part one for today's video, we're going to talk about power management and how we can get more control over it. Now, if you're a home miner, like I was originally before I moved over to a remote location, you had a simple PDU, which is basically just a power strip made for 240 volts. And this works perfectly fine. You can get these on eBay used under hundred bucks all day long. Now, the problem is what happens if your rigs starts acting weird, you need to do a hard reset, you have no control over this, you're not there, you can't pull the plug and restart the unit. So, what we need to do is move up to a smart PDU, something sort of like this, enterprise used stock. Normally these can sell easily, brand new, for over a thousand dollars. I got this on eBay shipped to me, almost brand new, $165. This actually, you can individually control and turn off every single plug, socket, everything on here. You have full control over it. It has a smart little computer built into it with a screen that we'll see later on. It will actually tell you how many watts you're pulling from every single socket. The whole unit itself, it has the ability to be controlled through a web GUI. So since this can actually be controlled through a web GUI, connected to ethernet cable to your local area network, that means you do not physically need to come on over to this PDU and power cycle a rig that's acting weird and wonky. You can literally do it remotely. Not to mention also, this unit will also record your full kilowatt hour usage until you reset it. Basically the same thing I'm doing right now. If you look over here, this is where my original PDU plugs into is one of those meter boxes and that's how I record. There we go, now you can see it. But yeah, it records my kilowatt hours. I won't need this meter after I'm done. So, it's all integrated into this one PDU. So let's get this one out of here and install this one and get it ready to roll. Okay, now if you've watched some of my previous videos, I used to have my power drop running down through here over to the side, and you just saw earlier in the video, the power box that I had, or the meter box, sitting right here in the corner. Then my old PDU used to plug in and run underneath and into where the old PDU is. Well, now I moved that wire right over here, and it's dropping, got your connection, the L630, drop it all down to the bottom and into the PDU. Only thing that's plugged in right now is the blue power cable, and that is for my network switch and the ethernet cable itself. Everything else is currently unpopulated and you can see just my network switch right now, 25 watts, that's what it's pulling. So let's go over to the computer screen and look at the web GUI for this. Okay, so I previously played with this at home before bringing it here and I've renamed it Mining Server Rack. Works perfectly fine. But here is all the information directly from that PDU. You can see 21 25.1 watts, 54 VA, um, apparent voltage, that's what that is. We are using 0 0.3 amps out of 24 amps. RMS voltage, 205 volts. Active energy, that's basically your kilowatt hour meter. This is when I was playing with it. I'm going to have to reset this before we put it into full work. And right now, power factor, only 0 0.46. It's nowhere near very good. Apparently, the power supply in that switch is not very efficient. And the line frequency is bouncing around between 59.9 and 60 hertz. Perfect. And then we can see, since there's two banks on there, the switch is currently plugged into C2, the second bank. And you can see there's our 0 0.3 amps. The first bank, there's nothing on it. We have, you can add on sensors to this, which I don't have. And there are alarms that you can set. There's a ton of stuff you can put in here. Here's your inlet history of the amount of power that you were using previously. 
Uh, this is not updated. This is from when I was playing with it probably about two weeks ago. Here, now if we click on inlet, it gives you the same information on top, breaks it down a little bit more. What state, is it normal, is it alarm, high, low? It gives you your RMS current, active power, active energy, everything, apparent power. If we scroll down and you got that same thing again. Oh, we can actually go RMS current. You can see your current history as well. Now, if we go for the outlets, we can. This, now, this is fun. You can rename any of these outlets you want to. Like right now, the bottom outlet is outlet 24. We can now see we've renamed switch uh, outlet 24 as network switch. This way, we know exactly which one it is. Now, this is fun. If I click here, you get a button here, and I can select all of them except for this one and we can turn them all on and off if we want to. So we click off. <laughs> that sounds good. On. And you can see it takes longer to turn them on. So now if we also look down here at the network switch, it might be a little hard for you to see, but we see of course everything's back on again and this one outlet is pulling 0 0.263 amps, 25 watts, and a power factor. It will tell you for every single thing. This is why this is so good for your rigs. If you had a rig on outlet 2 that was acting weird and it wouldn't reboot on itself and you need to power cycle and you weren't anywhere near, what we have to do is click outlet 2, tell it to off it, it's off. Turn it back on. There, you just power cycled one of your rigs. Now, in the case of outlet groups, if you want to group multiple outlets together, like if I had uh, OctoMiner 1, which has two power inputs on outlet 1 and 2, I can switch both of those on and off at the exact same time. Now, OCP is, is an overcurrent protector. That's basically your uh, circuit breaker that's built in for each bank. You have two banks, two circuit breakers, tells you if they're closed or open, how much current is currently on that part of the circuit. Now, peripherals are little add-ons that you can use from Raritan. Uh, I don't have any of these. Same with the feature port. I don't have anything going on with the feature port right now. Then we have user management. Right now, all I have is the admin, and you are not going to find out my password. Ha ha. You can even change some of the parameters that normally show up on the front screen of the display itself. Then even under maintenance, you can have connected users, event log, you can update the firmware for the brains on the PDU, firmware history, backup and restore your configuration, network diagnostics, hardware failures, full unit reset. It's insane how much information you can get out of a smart PDU. So give me a few minutes. Let me plug in all of my rigs and my CPU miners again. We'll go through the outlets, name them all together, create the outlet groups that we need, and we'll show you the final product here. Okay, so I got all the ports that I needed to name named, and I have them plugged in. They're all off still right now, except for the network switch. That one is on. So for the first circuit breaker, I currently have Octo 3, on plug ports one and two, and octa one on ports 11 and 12. That takes care of the first breaker. Now the second breaker, octa two is on outlets 13 and 14, the CPU miners are on outlet 22, and the network switch is on 24. And I also went over to outlet groups and made up the outlet groups. So octa three is on PDU, outlets one and two, 13, 14, 11, and 12, and 22 easier way to control it. So let's click on this one and just tell it to turn on Octo 3. Are you sure? Yes. We turn around. Everything's off except for Octo 3 that is now turning on. So let's turn on Octo 2 now. Click on that. Go on. Yes. And now we can see Octo 2 is getting ready to start up. You can hear the fans ramping up on that one. Let's turn on Octo 1. 
click on here, on, switch on. And now we see the blue light and the boot up sequence for Opto 1. And there goes the fans ramping for that one. The last one we need to turn on is all the CPU miners and the mini doge that's in the back there. So let's turn those on. Right here. Click on, switch on. And now we can see the fans are running up there as well. We go around to the back. We can see the CPU miners are booting up as we speak. And there's the mini doge blinking away. And we can see the outlets that are currently on have little red lights. And all the outlets I left off have green lights saying it's okay to plug in. So let's let everything boot up, get going, and get a final wattage rating from here and on the monitor. Okay, so now they're all powered up. They are hashing away. We can see Octo 3 currently pulling 911 watts. Octo 2 is currently pulling 755 watts. Octo 1, which is all my Vegas, is pulling 1400, basically 1400 watts. And the CPU miners and the Mini Doge are pulling 760 watts. Let's switch back to the dashboard and see what we're really seeing now. Nice. Okay. RMS voltage. I do have some voltage drop on this line, unfortunately. That's why it's red and we're running a little low. We are pulling 20.4 amps right now, 3.88 kilowatts. And we can see on each half here, this one's pulling 12.1 amps and this one's pulling 8.3 amps. Gives you all the information. Now let's go on over to the PDU and take a look at that. Oh, I gotta take this lens off. There we go. Now you can see it much better. And it gives you the current active power, which is kilowatt hours and apparent power. Power factor now is so much better. We're at 0 0.99 and active energy, it's counting up the kilowatt hours already. We just gotta update the time on this, that's it. So this is the first half of being able to remotely manage a remote mining farm. Next week, I should be making part two of this video and I will show you an easy way to get remote access from home, from across the country, from across the world, wherever, so you can get into the local area network here and you can do management for your PDU, you can do easy management through Hive OS, you can get into this main network securely and truly manage your remote rigs. So thanks for watching all the way through the video. Come say hi in the Misfit Mining Discord. Link for that is down in the video description. I will also try to put eBay links for either this PDU or similar PDUs at the right price point for the smart PDUs here or if you just need a cheaper PDU, I will also try to find links for this. I will try to keep them updated. As you know, eBay, the stock always changes as people are selling. So you might have to do a little bit of hunting, but I'll try to point you in the right direction. And I'll catch you on the next video.